uh, by Daniel, Tim, Ansley, John, and Joe. briefly break down our, our presentation, we have an introduction where we're going to be talking about you know, the societal impact, our design solutions, and what changed from our design, from our design criteria from last semester. We have the hardware we used, the software design, how they interconnect with each other, some testing that we did, and some outputs that we reported, the implementation for our demonstration video, the future plans for what we couldn't get done this semester, and then references that we use to help us in our project. Societal impact. Our wireless RFID parking scanner is a parking system that utilizes a UHF RFID scanner to record entering and exiting of registered cars in a parking lot. This will remove any mistakes that could be made during routine checks on registered cars. And will also will allow the more efficient parking enforcement without increasing labor cost. Project originality. Our device is a fully unified parking lot uh, management system with minimal need for security personnel. Non-intrusive, non high accuracy scanning with open source, database, software, and no need for prohibitively, prohibitively uh, expensive custom made hard hardware. The system can be easily modified to accommodate multiple parking lots or with lots that have multiple exits or entrances. So some of the codes and standards that were used to inform our uh, hardware and software development were the IEEE, uh, CC, and GS1. Uh, what they, that basically informs the type of frequency that we'll be operating at, which is ultra high frequency or around 900 to 928 megahertz. And also uh, the range of our sensor which, that will, which is going to be like around a maximum of about three meters and can also read about 64 bits of data. And also we had uh, the NYC Department of Buildings to form our standards for the power supply so that the power, so that our, the power supply will not uh, exceed uh, the conduct service capacity of 120 uh, VRMS. Now, this, the hardware that we used for this project was uh, two microcontrollers, the Raspberry Pi 3B and the Arduino Uno. Uh, we also have the uh, ultra high frequency RFID scanner for the RFID tags that we use for the system and an antenna to increase the range of the scanner. We also have a, re have a reserve battery in the event that uh, the system is plugged into an outlet. In the event that, let's say that there's an outage, the system will still continue to work uh, because it's operating on a reserve battery. And we also have a pair of ultrasonic distance sensors that work uh, in conjunction with the Raspberry Pi in the Arduino. <coughs> now, ultra high frequency was chosen because it's commonplace in North America to have to operate at, at the ultra high frequency, and also it increases the range of the sensor. And we use the Arduino to operate the scanner, uh, while the Raspberry Pi is used to organize the data transfer and to keep uh, tags in storage. So the Arduino, so the Raspberry Pi is what's storing uh, the tags information and also the power supply uh, adheres to the safety standards and power transmission. Preliminary design changes. We plan to drive the RFID scanner directly by the Raspberry Pi. However, we did encounter a problem. To fix it, we chose to drive the RFID scanner by an Adreno due to USB handshake issues with the Pi. We also originally wanted the power supply to have two outputs, but later determined it wasn't necessary, and the antenna has less range than we expected. For the system to power it, we were thinking about just using our standard charging brick that you'd use in a cell phone charger, but the problem with that 
was uh, whenever we plugged in our system, we got a power warning on the Raspberry Pi and it ran, and it was very buggy and very slow, it started freezing. So we decided to design our own power <coughs> supply. We went with a, a, a buck style switching mode power supply with a feed, with a voltage regulation feedback loop and over protection. Um, here we'll go over the software design, um, basically all the modules um, that are in the software uh, that integrate with the hardware. Um, here's the main system description. Um, we have our physical sensors, the uh, RF mini antenna, the en enter exit sensors, and the camera, which are all connected into the Raspberry Pi, um, which has the RFID tag database and the, uh, con and the main driver control program. Um, and there's also a user interface side where um, uh, people will get email notifications if there's any parking violations. Um, there's also a database manager software that allows us to add new tags to the um, database um, and also modify them. And there's also the RFID programmer, which is also the same as the antenna because we have one, only one RFID scanner um, uh, on this project. Uh, here's the functional diagram and the kind of data and power that's going between them. So with the RFID antenna, we have um, the, uh, the it, it sends out uh, ultra high frequency wave and then the tag responds with its data. The tag data is sent to the RFID reader shield we have in our, uh, on the Arduino. Uh, there's a serial connection to the Raspberry Pi where it sends the tag data. and. Um, there's also, before it reads the tag, there's the enter and exit circuit, which are, are sensing the two distances. Um, uh, and if something comes in the way of both of the distances, the distance sensors, um, it triggers the read, the voltage is sent to the Raspberry Pi, and it's all powered by the, the GPIO pins. Um, the camera is connected through the Raspberry Pi camera serial interface. Um, uh, the Raspberry Pi will send a photo request to the camera and images will be sent to the Raspberry Pi. There's also a 5 volt uh, 2 amp power supply um, and that includes the backup power as well. Um, here's a quick functional diagram of how our databases are set up because we actually have two. We have uh, one um, of listing who is in the lot and when they came in. and. Um, Another one of the actual um, information about the users of the tags. They, uh, it has their name, the expiration date of their tag, um, when the tag was entered into the system, and so on. Um, so when a tag is scanned, it goes into the lot database, it, um, and then it checks the tag database um, to see if that, that RFID tag is in there, um, and then it confirms if it's in there or not. If the tag is in the tag database, um, it will add the tag to the lot database saying this tag is in this lot at this time. Um, if there, that RFID tag is not entered into the tag database, it will send an email notification plus pictures of the car to, um, to the security personnel. Um, and also there's the database manager, which can make changes to the tag database on the fly. Um, here's the database manager module. Uh, it's coded in Python and um, using the easy GUI library um, so, so that we can have uh, buttons and windows um, so it's very user friendly. Um, so here's the, the main window here. You can add an ID, you can change the ID, remove it, or um, cancel and the system. Um, and when you, we'll just show you quick how you add an ID. You, uh, click on the add ID button and uh, the window would come up asking um, how would you like to enter this RFID tag? You can either manually put in the number or you can scan the tag. So if you scan the tag, um, the antenna will wait for you to scan a tag and then you, once it's scanned, you can enter the rest of the information. And this is our system's behavior module. You can see that the, the system starts when a car approaches the parking lot. The vast majority of the time, the system is idle in order to save power. So once it enters a lot, it determines where the car is exiting or entering. If it's exiting, it scans the RFID tag and removes the car from the list if it's in a database list. And then if it's entering, 
it scans to see if there's an RFID tag. If there's no tag found, then pictures of the car are captured and public safety is alerted. <coughs> if a tag is found, then it checks to see if the user is allowed to park at a uh, given time. If they are, it adds them into the lot database, which is pri periodically checked. And if at any time the person parking is not allowed to park, it sends the email to public safety. And this is our RFID scanner module. This consists of the RFID scanner itself, as well as the Arduino that drives the sensor. And the Raspberry Pi communicates with this RFID sensor via serial connection, and it becomes activated once sensors are triggered. And this, again, stays idle most of the time in order to save power because our antenna can consume a significant amount of power. And this also allows us to easily reset the sensor should it get stuck uh, or be able to not function for whatever reason. And our database is a custom database written in Python, and this was done so uh, as opposed to using MySQL, for example, because this allows us to easily integrate it with the rest of our project, and we don't use many of the features that uh, database software like MySQL uh, uses. So this relates a uh, key, the RFID tag number, with database entry corresponding to that person's information and parking privileges. Uh, it contains information such as uh, the date it was issued, the date it was expired, and what times the person is allowed to park. And this also contains uh, functions that allow for easily, easily entering and removing tags, as well as a lot of error checking in order to ensure that every tag entered to the database is valid. And all of the objects in the database are JSON serializable, so that we can easily back up the database and reload it in case the system needs to restart for whatever reason. And any time an update to this database is made, a uh, function is called and everything is updated automatically. And so the camera distance sensor module consists of uh, the camera, which takes pictures every X seconds and keeps the newest Y pictures safe to disk. And the oldest pictures are deleted as newer ones are captured. So this module for the camera it specifically runs on its own process and is multi-threaded so that it doesn't block the operation of the rest of the system as the camera is continuously taking pictures. And this allows us to determine, well, it allows us to capture pictures of the car entering the lot, as well as pictures of its license plate in order to prove that it did so. And so this module constantly pulls distance sensors in order to see if an object is close enough to where the, the RFID scanner will be triggered. And depending on the results of that RFID scanner trigger, the system will take different actions. Uh, for testing, we we mainly had to test three different things. The, one of the power supply could support you know, the system as we designed it. We had to test the antenna uh, certain distances with it because we realized we had a problem with what the uh, what its stated distance was. And uh, we ran different software modules to test the database and the manager software to make sure they were working record, working properly. I built the power supply first in P-Spice, and uh, on the top is, an, is a simulated LM555 timer, and we're running it at, uh, at around 25, 25 kilohertz. The second, the second picture is the output voltage, and it looks like a sinusoidal wave, that's because it's, it's zoomed in quite a bit. The first line there is 5.025 volts, and the second one up there is 5.05, so it's practically DC, and the third is the current in the inductor, and it reads about 1.87 amps on average. When we actually got the system built and we tested it, that's the, on the picture on the left is the timer working, working properly, and the picture on the right, the green line is the output voltage to the Raspberry Pi, and the yellow line is the voltage that is the DC voltage that is getting stepped down to 5 volts. And this is, this is the result of our antenna read distance tests. As you can see, it's very accurate up until two and a half meters, I mean two and a half feet. After that, the signal uh, sharply decays and we lose accuracy. And this is likely because the uh, power delivery to the RFID uh, antenna isn't strong enough. So we had to account for that in our tests. So when we uh, tested the database in uh, particular, each database module was tested independently at first using a mixture of both black box and white box testing. So we initially did white box testing where the tester knew the uh, 
operation of the module and we attempted to provide invalid data. After that, we gave it to someone who did not know the uh, inner workings of the module and we instructed them to try and provide invalid data. After we got satisfactory results from that, the modules were integrated one by one and the, the process was repeated until we had a fully functioning system that was stable. Here's a, a document from the database manager testing. Um, I had an earlier test and I found out that we had some problems with uh, user friendliness and error checking. So um, this, is a, this is a new test taken last week showing that um, all of our error checking is correct. And um, we also added um, recently the entering of the ID by scanning, which works great. Um, and, the con and we also have a continue button now so the program doesn't clone it out every time you enter something or modify something, because that was what we, we, what was happening earlier. Um, so now we believe the database software is uh, user friendly um, because of these additions. Um, for the implementation, we have like you know, a few slides. The picture of our overall system. It's smaller than what it would be if used in, practi in practicality because it made it easier for us to bring it around and test it in different areas. Uh, we have uh, two demonstration videos, one of the active scanning attack, and that that type of video can that input can act of that can act for a valid tag, invalid tag, and a valid tag and invalid tag. And the second video is just the car going by the system and the camera taking pictures of it and sending it by email. So this um, so this is this is our system um, on the left top. Uh, you'll see um, it points to the RFID reader, which is that little red uh, module over there. Um, it's that it's an RFID reader shield on top of our Arduino, connected to that Raspberry Pi, um, which is also connected to that um, RFID antenna there. Um, on the bottom left, um, on the very bottom, you'll see the distance sensor circuit. Um, this is where the um, ultrasonic distance sensors are, and uh, they're connected through the GPIO pins to the Raspberry Pi. Um, there's a power supply on the right the middle, there's a power supply, um, and connect it's connected to a battery backup, which is connected to the Raspberry Pi. Um, and then there's also a uh, infrared camera connected to the Raspberry Pi. So that is our system overview. since we said we had the uh, distance errors with the antenna, instead of being able to have the antenna read through the windshield, we had the, for testing, we just had to per physically swipe the tag in front of it about you know, a, a foot, one and a half feet to two feet. And the second video is just the car rolling by with no attempted tag scan. So when the scan is initiated, or before the scan is initiated rather, we have two distance, a pair of distance sensors that are shooting out the signal uh, to wait for an object to approach nearby. Now you'll notice that there's some discrepancy between distance one and distance two. Uh, the reason why that is because in, uh, the, the first distance sensor is scanning far, uh, farther while the second distance sensor is uh, hitting an object. Now uh, the scanner, in order for the uh, the scanner to begin uh, working of uh, both distance sensors, not one or the other, but both distance sensors must uh, hit the minimum threshold value to begin for the system to begin scanning, and that minimum threshold value is 20 centimeters. Uh, note that 20 centimeters is used, used for our purpose. Uh, it can be adjusted accordingly, so you can either increase or increase the threshold distance before the sensor will begin, uh, uh, before the scanner will begin uh, uh, working. Now, once the scanner has detected, uh, once the scanner has begun working, you can see the tag ID uh, right here, and it will also register that the tag has entered uh, the lock. Now, 
what happens when you're trying to leave the lot? Well, what, because now that the vehicle, in this case the vehicle, has entered the lot, it is registered in the lot. But when you want to leave the lot, uh, what will happen is that the vehicle, is the, when the scanner uh, hits the tag, uh, the scanner will register that the vehicle is already logged into the database. However, it will acknowledge that since it is uh, already in the database and it's scanning the tag for a second time, the vehicle will be leaving and it will register and it will remove the tag or it will remove the entry uh, from that specific lot. Now for invalid tags, uh, what will happen, an invalid tag consists of a tag that is either expired or is not registered for the lot. So say a student tag is parked, tries to go into like a faculty lot. Uh, what will happen is that the scanner, in conjunction with the distance sensor, it will recognize that, it will recognize the tag and it will uh, send a message to public safety saying that the tag is not recognized because it's not, met, it's not it's either expired or uh, it's not meant to be being used for that specific lot. And another situation is what happens if there is no tag? What happens if the RF, what happens if the first if a vehicle entering the lot doesn't have an RFID tag whatsoever? What happens here is that um, the distance sensor will, will work as normal, and when the scanner does not detect an RFID tag, the sensor will uh, shut down and will send a message to public safety saying that the tag was not found, meaning that a vehicle entered the lot, there was no tag, so therefore this vehicle is not registered in Manhattan, to anyone in Manhattan College. So here's the um, email notifications you'll see if there's these um, unregistered vehicles trying to park. Um, it will also send it, it will, if there's a tag that is not registered with um, the lot, it will show that the RFID number, it's um, tag number it scans, and it'll say that this tag number was found to be staying in the lot during unauthorized hours. Make an effort to verify this violation and distribute tickets if needed. Um, if there is no tag, um, then it'll say that a vehicle is not registered. Um, well, a vehicle that is not registered with the lot has attempted to park. Um, attach your pictures of the vehicle, and it actually saves those array of pictures um, that the the Pi keeps taking into a zip file and has that in the email there. Um, so uh, here's an example of some of the pictures. Um, as you can see, that second video demonstration, um, Dan did not. Um, scanned an RFID tag while going past the system. So it took pictures of his car, and you can make out what kind of car it is, you can make out the color of it, and you can also see the, um, the uh, license plate. Um, so if so, somebody can go to the lot and identify which vehicle parked um, at the uh, park when it's not supposed to. And for future work, if uh, we wanted to keep this antenna, and say if we didn't have any more budget for another one, instead of having the antenna above the car or to the side where only the driver's side can scan it, and on the way back when the passenger side has to, sc has to scan it, we could actually put the antenna underneath the car and put the RFID tag on the bumper, so that would be very, very close proximity, and whether you're entering or exiting, it'll scan it. Uh, like we mentioned before, uh, as we have right now, this system would only work in a lot that has one entrance that also acts as an exit. So, for example, it would work in three separate lots on this campus, but not in the garage right now. Uh, we would like, we could either build a 3D print or buy a case for the system so that weather won't interfere with it. Uh, to make the system more realistic and practical use, we would have to measure, measure out the area and attach longer wires for the sensors and for the scanner. And uh, we should also allow the parking system to be remotely controlled by an administrative computer. This was the cost of our system. Uh, taking everything into account, it cost around $368.76. But we were fortunate enough that the school lent us the Raspberry Pi 3B, which was $40. Uh, we had an Arduino Uno on hand to drive the scanner. And we had an extra 8 gigabyte SD, uh, SD card. And these are references we use to complete our project. Thank you.